first day, the first day of a, a different career? A little bit. You know, we've uh, we've obviously, of course, had the workouts through the the uh, summer and the fall, but. Uh, there's just something different about it, yeah. When you when you've got the the hours allotment that changes and the and the schedule, you know, you have more time with them now. So uh, it is, it is. I, I I'd be lying if I said there weren't a little bit of anxious butterflies this morning to get it going because now that you know it's that first day, first day of practice and things are just different, but uh, in a good way, in a good way. When it comes to uh, building this program, uh, what's the first thing you're focusing on? Uh, where do you actually start? Uh, I think. Well, you know, it started when we first got here and, and just we really just wanted to get guys in here that were competitive, uh, you know, represented UNLV the way it should be represented. Um, I think one of our main goals was when, when anybody leaves the Thomas and Mac or watches us on the road that they're proud. Uh, they're proud that these guys are representing UNLV and they're playing hard and, and really just competing to win and, and competitive people. And I think, you know, today was a good sign. Uh, they've, they've had a great summer and a great fall in that regard, but uh, we want them to be competitive. We want our practices to be high energy, and, and I thought today was great. Marvin's coming back this year. Mm -hmm. How is he looking? Great, great. Marvin, you know, it, it's the best part about Marvin is reliable. Uh, Coach Buck always says one of the best abilities is reliability, and, and that's so true because he's somebody you can count on. He's been here. Um, when you say things and you, and you talk with him, you kind of understand each other because there's that history. So having him come back was huge, and, and we're going to lean on him a lot for leadership and, and a steady hand. Is your whole team vaccinated? I'm uh, pretty sure you'd have to check with, uh, but uh, yeah, I think we've, we've done everything we, we've been asked to do there. Kevin, you got so many new faces with all the transfers coming in mm -hmm. and everything, and yet you got so many guys with so much experience. How does how do those two things kind of dovetail with each other? Well, we're hoping that the, the experience and the age can kind of, you know, shorten or lessen the gap uh, in terms of time with each other. Uh, we've got guys that being older, you know, on their second stop, we can, the conversations can are a lot more direct. Sometimes, you know, in a, with a freshman or, or a younger player, uh, certain conversations or certain things, you have to kind of be aware of what it, the impact it might have. Whereas, you know, Royce being older, Donovan being on his second stop, you know, those guys you can have very direct, mature adult conversations with. and. We're hoping that being able to do that will uh, kind of shorten that gap so with the chemistry because they're, they're all rooting for each other and, and they understand what it takes to win. And, and so uh, we're really going to you know, hope that that can uh, prove to be an advantage for us. Kevin, follow on that. What did it mean to, uh, to bring Bryce back? Can you just kind of walk us through how that summer played out with him before the decision? No, it was great. It was great. I think that was a huge piece for us. Uh, you know, Bryce's ability to score is, you know, it's it's just one of those things. It's an instinct for him. It's natural. <laughs> he goes and, you know, he just at the end, you got nothing going and he just throws the ball in and it's great. And, you know, all the coaches get a pat on the back, but, you know, he's the one that's out there <laughs> you know, make, making things happen. And, uh, but we're going to lean on him, uh, you know, heavy. And we've told him that from the, the time he decided to come back. Uh, had an opportunity to sit down with him and his mom a couple times in the summer and, and just kind of say, you know, I would love, we would love for you to be in this you know, two feet with us because we think you could, the sky's the limit for you. And um, that's one of the things we were just talking about over there right after practice during the pick em segment at the end was, you know, just be aggressive. We want you to go score. And, and, and you know, the team needs you and wants you to go score. And, and he's just got that ability. That, uh, that a lot of people don't have. So we're going to lean on him, rely on him, and, and keep pushing him. Athletically, physically, does this feel like a Power 5 team? What do you have in terms of just pure athletes? Well, I mean, I've always felt, you know, UNLV is a Power 5 program, uh, you know, just in terms of, of ability and, and resources. And, and I, I, But to that point, yeah, I, I think so. You know, obviously Royce and, and Vic coming from Oklahoma and Texas and Donovan, of course, coming from that Power 5 level, as you mentioned, but uh, that was another thing we kind of looked for in the portal. It was kind of older, mature guys that have been through the wars, and and the fact that they just happened to come from the Big 12 was was uh, just kind of just a happenstance. Big 10, ACC wouldn't have really mattered to us, but no, we lo we love the group. I think they're they're high energy, high competitive level, and and that's uh, that's what we're going for. Can Can you talk about the feelings towards uh, playing teams like Michigan and UCLA this fall? Uh, why will this uh, be an exciting matchup? Well, anytime, you know, Michigan come, and UCLA actually coming off an Elite Eight against each other, you know, that UCLA won. Um, you, when you got those household names that have been in the hunt for 
I mean, well, UCLA, of course, for forever, and, and Michigan having their basketball-rich tradition that they have, I think that immediately gathers attention. And, of course, you know, the UNLV fan base and how passionate and, and interested they are when they see those names, there is a little bit of heightened uh, excitement. So, uh, but again, for us, it's about Gardner-Webb. It's about getting better for Thursday and, and getting, as, as we talked about a second ago, getting that group to, to gel and to be cohesive because I, I really do think the sky's the limit for this group. And if we keep getting better every day and keep, you know, just playing for each other, that, that we could be pretty good. What kind of role does your dad have just being around practice and being around these guys? Uh, well, it's, first and foremost, he's number one grandpa. I can promise you that. Um, he actually was up here for about an hour with my daughter yesterday, just running her into the ground because she's not sleeping a ton right now. So that that was first and foremost. But uh, it's, you know, the, it, he's a mentor to me as much as he is a dad, uh, not just the, my personal life, but of course in basketball as well. So uh, I, I have no hesitation or qualms about admitting that, yeah, I'm going to bounce everything off of him. I wrote up the first practice plan and uh, after meeting with the coaches, I, you know, what what did, what would you do differently when you were coaching? You know, what do you think of this? How would you explain that? And I have no... There's no hesitation on my mind that, in my mind that, that yeah, I'm going to lean on him a lot and, and hope he helps out. Uh, you know, this isn't just me getting this thing back going. It's, it's everybody. Uh, we've had a, we had a couple former players in the stands that I noticed throughout practice. That's awesome. That, I mean, we want that. You know, we want them to come by and support. It's, it's their program. You know, we're just representing it right now. But uh, as for my dad, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's, he's got his opinion over there and he's going to come give it to me, and, but we're going to welcome it. And... Uh, you know, uh, he's one of the opinions we will welcome. <laughs> you mentioned that you wanted Bryce to come back um, with, with two feet in. Um, and for someone who went through the, the draft process and has those goals, is that can that be a difficult thing to sort of reset and come back to college? And how do you feel like you feel like he has jumped in with both feet here? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you'd have to ask him on the difficult, uh, just having never experienced it personally. But I could see where that could be, you know, tough. For a guy, you know, you, your dreams are going to play in the NBA, and and for him to come back, uh, I think a lot of that was because he had two feet in, and he wants to get to the NCAA tournament and be remembered, you know, amongst the UNLV family and the alumni. And um, but he's no, he's been great. He's been awesome. He's a uh, he's a quiet guy by nature. He's starting to come out of his shell a little bit in, the, in that leadership. But uh, we're going to keep giving him more responsibility. You know, we we want this team to go as he goes, and we're not. Uh, shy about that at all and and I think he's welcoming it and the more he welcomes it you know I think it is just better for us in the long run. Thank you.